I test drove three motorcycles. One is a Triumph Scrambler 400X, one is a Himalayan 450, and the third one, the KTM 390 Adventure X. One was a huge disappointment. <laughs> one just blew my mind, and the other one, we bought it home. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I'll give you guys a context. So my friend Yesh, she's been riding bikes for around three to four years now. She takes my Himalayan for city commutes and I take her scooter for city commutes. And we have done a lot of trips. She even ha has done two solo trips uh, on my Himalayan. We also have done many uh, South Indian trips. And we, along with our friends, went uh, for off-road training under Mac Motorsports by Asad. Uh, all the videos are all uh, up on my channel. I will leave the link in the i button above. So she's been quite good at riding bikes now. I mean, she finally thought it's time to I have a bike of her own. We were in the market looking out for mid-weight segment, 300 to 400 cc motorcycle that can do a little bit of off-road, mainly highway touring and city commute friendly also. So we narrowed down our options to three bikes in the market now. One is a Triumph uh, Scrambler 400X, KTM 390 Adventure X and uh, Himalayan 450. Uh, we test drove all these bikes in a span of just two days. I think the Triumph and the uh, Himalayan we test drove it in a single day and the next day we took the KTM 390 Adventure for a test drive. Now I will not get into do spec by spec comparison of these three bikes. The intention of this video is to purely share with you how I felt as a commuter, as a tourer and as an off-road rider, how I felt riding these three bikes uh, back to back in comparison. Regarding the specs and all that, there are like hundreds of videos out there on YouTube, you can check that out. First, I'll talk about the KTM 390 Adventure X and this motorcycle just blew my mind. I've never ridden a KTM and this was the first time that I was trying out a KTM bike. The moment I sat in, first of all, I felt it's a little bit taller because I'm used to Himalayan's height and my height is 5'5". 167 centimeter to be exact. For me, it was like tiptoeing around. Even tiptoeing was difficult for me, but I never felt intimidated because weight is very less. It's around 177 kg, I think. Second is the moment I started riding it. Oh my God, it just blew my mind how much power it had. It was like amazing, amazing power. The moment I opened up the throttle, it was like flying. I was like holding on to my dear life to stay planet on the bike. <laughs> so that, that was like amazing. It just blew my mind how powerful it was. Like I reached 113 just in a matter of, I don't know how many seconds because I got completely lost in that thrill, in that joy of riding. So I've never ridden a motorcycle to be honest. So this is my first time experiencing a KTM's power. It, it felt so good. Like it felt like I need to skill up a lot more to be able to have handle that kind of power and it was very easy to maneuver through the city uh, traffic very effortless beautiful bike beautiful bike but i still didn't go for the ktm 390 adventure x the first reason uh, is that i don't know if it was just the problem with the particular test drive vehicle that i got but it was vibey as hell. Vibey in the sense the handlebars were buzzing so much around the mid-range RPM. Uh, around the high high end RPM, the vibe settled down. But in the mid-range, it was buzzing like crazy. I still think, I believe, I want to believe that it is a problem with that particular test drive vehicle. Uh, but somehow it felt so buzzy to a point where my hands started becoming numb. Even with like 5-10 minutes of riding, it was feeling very numb. It was, it almost felt like as if the old Zamanaka, that double one double zero Nokia phones, how used to vibrate so bad that there are memes around it that it, it, it'll break your bones kind of thing. It felt like holding those phones had, uh, in the hand and continuously vibrating for 5-10 minutes. It was that much buzzing on the handlebars that felt very uncomfortable. I usually don't care about buzzing and vibrations a lot because I cruise on, on Nino, my Himalayan, at 120 km per hour. So in 120 km per hour, Himalayan is not comfortable. It will vibe a lot, but I still don't mind that. This felt even worse than that. Very, 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 very bad. Like it was buzzing a lot. I don't know why it happened. Please let me know in KTM owners comment section below whether it happens with all KTMs or just maybe bad like I got a bad test ride bike, I don't know. Second thing we didn't go with the KTM is that it felt at higher speeds, even at 120 kmph, it didn't feel planted to the ground. We want a bike that we want, want to take it to touring as well. So I think with luggage and everything, it will feel a little bit planted, but at high speeds, even in a straight line, the bike feels like it's in the air. So I felt that you have to put in a lot of effort to be able to control it and uh, keep it planted and uh, steady on the highways. what I feel, I don't know, I'm not sure. I didn't get to dash drive for long hours on the saddle, but that's what I felt. For example, Himalayan, even, even when you cruise at 110, 120 and all that, because of its weight, it feels calm, it feels 
firmly planted to the ground to a point where it's almost effortless for you and you just have to open the throttle and sit comfortably the bike will take you on the other hand this one i felt we need to be in control we need to be conscious of the fact that we are on, we are going at high speeds and be a little more vigilant that's what i felt maybe i'm wrong correct me if i'm wrong so that is why we didn't go for the ktm as well it is good for race track amazing for race track i can i can imagine that the feedback is great so that you can if you sit concentrated on your bike uh, and just open up the throttle and want to go fast sporty kind of nature it is amazing so i think that particular engine fits best for the rc rc390 i know i have not ridden rc but i think it fits perfectly for that for an adv i don't think that engine is quite good third thing why i really didn't go is the low end torque is absolutely not there we both are used to himalayan now uh, i've been riding bullet 350 for 3 years and after that i switched to himalayan i am used to the low end torque of the royal enfield so even when she started riding she has been riding my himalayan so she's also used to that low end torque that uh, lazy riding where you can just aram se open the throttle and it will take you without any issues from the idle rpm to all the way to the uh, higher rpms so that kind of thing is not there in ktm in the 5 minutes of riding that i took through the city at least 4 5 times the bike stalled and switched off because i'm not used to opening the throttle and then leaving the clutch i'm just used to leaving the clutch and opening the throttle and it this himalayan used to take me along that ktm you cannot do that you have to open the throttle a bit and then release clutch and that constant engagement has to be there otherwise it will stall and switch off so low and absolutely nothing is there over 3000 to 4000 rpm only it has a little bit of power i mean you will get used to it but it is a lot of work those are the three things that made us not go ahead with the ktm 390 adventure x next we come to the himalayan 450 now himalayan 450 was the one bike that i was so much looking forward to ride because i am a himalayan owner for the past 4 years now i have clocked almost 43000 kilometers and i saw so many videos telling how good it is how like praising it so much so this was the bike that i was most thrilled and was looking forward to testing it out in in our mind we were almost confirmed that we will test drive all the three just for name sake but we know that we will be mostly going with the uh, himalayan 450 based on all the reviews and videos that we got to see but i have to say himalayan 450 was the most disappointing bike of them all actually speaking i know well get a lot of backlash maybe from ari fans and all that stuff but first i will talk about the good things that i felt about himalayan 450 and then i'll talk about the lot of bad things that made us not buy the himalayan 450 good thing power now the himalayan finally it clocks 130 140 i was able to hit 136 in a short stretch of road uh, in fifth gear itself put on sixth gear to reach 140 around 140 and then i i couldn't go further power is very good i i think it will be a great deal of help in covering long distances on the saddle now it's like a all rounder touring machine proper touring machine because it can do a long stretches on the highway at high speeds and that is comfortable second thing what i, I notice is the suspension suspension is amazing amazing suspension but now i didn't get to test it off, uh, off road but whatever the rumble patches that uh, the small bump patches are there on, on the highway uh, in the city potholes and all that stuff it soaks in very very nice beautiful it it is heavy but you don't feel the weight as soon as you start the bike as soon as you start moving you don't feel the weight at all and i felt personally felt it is much nimble than the older himalayan when people tell uh, newer himalayan is difficult to come into the city and all that stuff but i felt once the bike starts moving it is much nimble than the older himalayan i think because of the usd fox and all that the weight management is very nice i felt it much more nimble in city traffic so in that way weight management suspension power wise it is nice now coming to the bad things the first thing it sounds like a typical royal enfield engine it is so clunky clanky tap it noise and all that is there lacks refinement even now that has been one major issue with my old himalayan also that i used to i've told it in many many videos the engine is still very noisy still very clanky still sounds very unrefined after like 10 or 15 minutes of riding i could hear tap it noise when i came to a stop in a signal that typical royal enfield sound kada 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 that i i cannot even tell you like how bad it sounds so that engine is still 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 bad it still feels very coarse unrefined and the funny part is when i started the bike itself the mirror start to vibrate uh, at higher speeds and one mirror like started rotating like this 
and it came off then i had to remove they had to stop the bike remove it and put it in my pocket and then continue riding and vibrations are there but not as bad as the ktm so you can live with it the second thing i noticed is the throttle response it is very bad throttle response in the sense that it is the same like how my himalayan was before installing the fuel x bmc and the, the power edge exhaust it is very laggy it is very slow the moment you open the throttle it doesn't respond to that 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 moment it slowly accelerates like you're going in a 4000 to 5000 rpm and you suddenly want to take a, i mean overtake a car or a truck or something and when you open the throttle there is still a delay it doesn't open up and it accelerates very slowly it accelerates it, there is a linear acceleration but it is very slow i'm like you have 40 horsepower in that engine why are you restricting it so much like i personally feel that engine can do much better because that's what when i installed fuel x bmc and the power edge exhaust in my himalayan it opened up the engine a lot that's when i knew how much they are restricting the capacity or the potential of this uh, beautiful engine here they have restricted a lot even with the 40 horsepower you are not getting that feel of the 40 horsepower the moment you want to get the feel of the bike pulling you you open up the throttle it is there it is not it doesn't pull it again slowly accelerates it can reach a top speed of 140 150 and i have seen videos where they are taking 160 also but it is not it is not quick it is fast it is not quick it's still not quick so i'm like why pay this so much of amount of money to buy an engine that is still restricted it doesn't make any sense so that was that was one uh, huge disappointment for me third one the huge disappointment that i have is tubeless spoke wheels re claims that they'll bring the tubeless spoke and everything i asked two or three different service centers none of them have a clue when it, when it will come second thing none of the accessories have come to the uh, showrooms none of the accessories have come to the service centers so that also is a question mark when it will come and all that stuff so without any accessories without the tubeless spoke wheels the bike is very expensive it is almost 3.7 when i was i test drove it and now it has come up to 3.9 also in bangalore so it doesn't make sense to buy a bike that till is old school with no accessories uh, tube spoke wheels and everything and then when it comes later on god knows when it comes to invest another 40 50000 rupees for the uh, tubeless uh, spoke rims and all that stuff so it doesn't make absolute sense so that is why all in all himalayan was a huge disappointment for me and another one fact i can tell is weight i'm still not comfortable with the weight this is bike is top heavy while riding it doesn't feel that but the moment you want to park you are very very conscious about where to park uh, if i park there will i be able to take it out and the side stand uh, the leaning angle is so much that the moment you put a side stand you are very 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 cautious that i should not drop the bike is it feels that heavy and that to test drive vehicle had little bit of petrol so imagine if the if the tank is full it will still feel a lot heavy it will still feel cumbersome when you are parking getting out traveling to the city it will feel still feel that those are the two main reasons why i don't uh, i don't have still have don't have the confidence to take my himal and also anywhere off road one is that it feels heavy so anywhere if you fall down it is very difficult for uh, someone like me who weighs like 62 kg and 5 feet 5, 5 inches tall to pick up the bike and then continue onward second thing is because of the tube tires i have had enough number of punctures on my rear tire especially that i have struggled a lot and especially now in bang even in bangalore city people have stopped repairing tube tires for himalayan especially for himalayan so wherever i used to take the bike for repair they used to be like uh, we will not remove the back tire if you can remove the back tire and give we will fix up a puncture and give it to you and this has been happening for since like the last one or two years only prior to that whenever I, i i used to take to the shops or if i call some people they'll come remove the back tire and fix the puncture now nowadays they don't do that at all when i asked them uh, different people gave different reasons one of them told me that sir if we remove it because of the disc assembly if something happens to the disc, disc assembly the customers will sue us they'll make issue and that has happened to us so we will not touch any bikes that has a disc assembly second reason many have told me is removing the back tire itself is a task so so we'll need to charge uh, labor charges as well if we charge the labor charge also then fixing a puncture would be like 250 300 rupees which many customers are not willing to pay that much to fix a tire puncture so that's why we will not remove the back tire if you can remove the back tire and give us then we'll fix up a puncture for you so then finally i had to learn to remove the back tire take it in an auto or a scooter and then go to the nearby shop fix it come back and then fix it rajasthan trip also somewhere near indore puncture happened and i had to remove the back tire all by myself take it to the nearby shop with the help of local people then get it fixed and come back and it's a, it is a huge hassle especially when you're riding alone and when you have luggage on your bike you are very scared to leave your bike 
thankfully the locals were very nice and i the passenger happened in front of a small hotel the so the hotel owner told me don't worry about anything sir keep your bag everything safe i had my laptop my camera gears everything in my bag good people i'm so happy that they took care of it very well till i came back and fixed the tire the problem is when you travel alone removing it and fixing it will drain so much energy that when you have a tight schedule and you want to uh, ride 400 500 kilometers on the highway it takes so much energy out of you and it is and it takes a confidence out of you to go anywhere remote this happened on the highway so it is fine what if i went remote uh, to an off road area and then this happened where there was no coverage and all that even the konkan coastline at many places there was no network coverage also and so all this is a huge disadvantage when you want to go touring especially solo touring for someone like yes female it is not as safe as it is for a male or there in our country so if she gets stranded uh, in the middle of nowhere with a panja it is going to be a hell lot of an issue not just uh, repairing the panja wise safety wise seeing all this we felt that taking the new himalayan will be a waste of money another bad thing is i have been fed up with the royal enfield service centers you all know that story i have in two three different videos i have told how bad the royal enfield service centers are I have suffered a great deal I suffered enough with the service centers all throughout like four or five different service centers all throughout Bangalore overall the ownership of my Himalayan has not been the greatest especially when it comes to service and all that stuff so bearing all these disadvantages the weight poor refinement of the engine the poor throttle response had no accessories having two spoke wheels all in all it didn't feel a value for money product it felt like huge disappointment for me i still don't un- understand why people keep praising it so damn much and all that one another thing i forgot to tell it feels same like atm there is no low end torque till 2000 or 3000 rpm there is absolutely no low end torque for himalayan same like atm 300 adventure x in the 5 or 10 minutes of the city commuting i did through the himalayan two or three times it switched off because of the knocking it doesn't have low end torque at all it feels like just like a ktm engine ktm okay fine uh, the low end torque is not that till 4000 5000 rpm this is not that till 2000 or 3000 rpm you cannot like leisurely comfortably ride i mean you cannot like do a lazy riding like how you do on the older himalayan newer himalayan off road enthusiasts like who are experts who are racers and all they will find it i think amusing and helpful for them because they they can rev up the engine and have the throttle clutch feel and all that stuff and do all that circus and go fast for someone like me who wants to do a slow trail riding want to climb trails in a slow paced manner enjoy everything around do a lazy city commute or something like that the new himalayan is not at all good the older himalayan is perfect for that after test driving the a uh, newer himalayan i have a huge new found respect to my himalayan the nino the your older 411s if you are a himalayan 411 owner who's watching this please don't sell your himalayan please don't have that fomo that you are missing out on the upgrade and all that stuff please don't fall for the marketing gimmicks and the all the hype and all the p- uh, wonderful praising videos of himalayan on youtube i feel ryan builders put in so much of money to this journalist to tell all good stuff about himalayan the new himalayan is not an upgrade to the 4411 the new himalayan is a totally different motorcycle the totally different characters it is just that it is from the same company and it looks almost similar that is the only thing that is carried over from the old himalayan to the new himalayan it looks kind of similar the name is same and it is from the same company but all in all it's a totally different motorcycle it is not at all an upgrade i would personally suggest you to keep your 411 himalayan install all the mods invest money in it install the fuel lex the uh, an aftermarket exhaust air filter and uh, and i now i have given it to install the new tech cam as well so i'm hoping that it will take my 411 to higher level also i don't want the himalayan to go fast like 130 140 and all 120 is beautiful enough for me to cruise on the highways and if my himalayan can do that comfortably so be it i'm so happy and i have a so new found respect to my himalayan now the new himalayan doesn't make any sense it is not at all refined poor throttle response heavy weight tube spoke no low end torque i can go on and on it doesn't fit at all for my this thing so we both were huge hugely disappointed by the fact that this uh, himalayan was like this that's why we didn't adopt the plan of buying the himalayan the third and final bike that we drove is the triumph scrambler 400x now this bike is absolutely beautiful and this is the one that we decided to buy for her and coming to the positives first and foremost 
the refinement engine feels beautifully refined beautifully smooth no rattle no clinky clanky noises nothing it is beautifully refined engine feels like a honda engine that that much it is refined beautiful beautiful refinement of the engine that's the first thing i could notice because i rode it at the same day i rode the himalayan also so maybe that that's why i noticed it the second thing that i loved about triumph is the throttle response if you want to just in case if you want to overtake just a slight twist of the throttle and the bike jumps it is like it is ready for you to command and it just goes beautiful power delivery and it is not as, as scary as ktms it's a little bit more linear than the ktms but slight twist of throttle throttle response is great the seat height is a little bit high but again it doesn't feel that intimidating as in himalayan uh, because the weight is less i think around 187 kg it weighs still weighs more than the ktm to a point where it feels stable at high speeds now i couldn't clock much i clocked it around 110 i think there's a maximum i clocked on the triumph scrambler that was for a short distance but in that time also i didn't feel as light headed as the ktm i felt very planted very comfortable and very confident on the road the overall fit and finish of triumph is just insane i think that everybody has covered in that in the review videos the fit and finish is just beautiful there's no eyesore kind of wiring or anything like that that still there is in himalayan the console and all is nice but the moment you look be, be below the console a lot of mishaps and ugly wiring and everything you can see in the new himalayan as well triumph it is very neatly laid out very neatly designed beautiful it like you feel like feel good owning that kind of bike third thing is tubeless again that's that's a good good thing that you can tour without having the tension of any puncture in mind it comes with engine guards it comes with knuckle guards again knuckle guards are plastic i don't think it will uh, be sufficient to take a fall i think it will break in the first fall itself if so so be it but at least it comes with a knuckle guard comes with the engine cover comes with the headlight grill everything that too this is the cheapest of the bikes ktm 390 adventure x is around 3.8 on road himalayan is 3.9 on road and this is 3.5 on road the next thing that i notice in the triumph is the low end torque out of all the three bikes triumph had the best low end torque it almost felt as good as the older himalayan the from right from the idling rpm it has a nice low end torque till around 2000 rpm it has a nice low end torque even if even the second or third gear i could do like 30 speed and fourth gear also i think it's because of the different uh, sprockets and everything it has a shorter gearing ratio also you had you need to change the gear uh, faster to climb up higher speeds but that's okay even in that you can cruise aram say at the lower rpms there is no knocking at all even below 2000 rpm there is absolutely no no knocking there is knocking only in the sixth gear but that too is around like 50 or 60 speeds beyond that there is no knocking at all till 3000 rpm Uh, you can aram se lazily cruise i mean you can kind of do a lazy driving on the city or for the small highway trips you can do a lazy cruise or lazy driving just like the older himalayans you have good amount of torque from idle rpm to around 2000 3000 you boost 2000 3000 if you want to open up the throttle you have the all that power jumping kind of power you have in your hand till then if you want to overtake or something like that you may need to downshift if you are around the 2000 to 3000 rpm and you are cruising you you want to overtake a truck or something like that the older himalayan you you can just still open the throttle and just slowly accelerate and and takes you away here if you open the throttle like that in the 2000 to 3000 rpm range it will start to knock downshift one gear and then open the throttle and overtake but if you want to just cruise in that 2000 to 3000 rpm aram so you can do that there is no knocking there is no stalling so the torque the power delivery the acceleration uh, the laziness of the engine as well as the powerful character of the engine together forms a beautiful harmony guessing that on off road also it will be of a great deal of help when you want to uh, do slow kind of trail riding on the trails and all that second gear first gear you can aram se at 20 30 km per hour aram se do trails and it can aram se chug along and on the highways when you want to suddenly go and have some fun and then overtake a truck you have that power instantly at your hands so that you can have a little bit of fun that get that acceleration feel and overtake trucks or whatever you want to overtake suspension very good uh, i i didn't do any off road riding but in the city uh, bumps and the potholes and all beautifully it absorbs beautiful suspension very nice uh, maybe i think if you do kind of hardcore off riding like how we do with the older himalayans it, the suspension might bottom out in this one but for the daily city commute for highways i think it is absolutely brilliant very easy to nimble in the city it almost felt like riding uh, access 125 so fun that the moment we test drove it we we, we were like no further questions asked we are going to take this and uh, makes sense in every way comes with all the accessories the price is the cheapest of of the mod that's why 
finally we we decided and went with the triumph scramble 400x and now the coming to the downsides what i felt is funny is the braking is soft i heard that triumph did it intentionally they don't want you to jam the brakes while going off road and then uh, suffering a fall and all that stuff so they have given a uh, organic pads over the cinder tracks and they have on the speed 400 so i think first service i'll swap out the big pads and that should solve the problem second thing that i felt is the overall ergonomics the beautiful ergonomics it is while saddling and all that ergonomics in all three bikes is perfect with the seat height is tall it is 835 so you'll feel like you're sitting on top of a horse or something like that you can see the top of all the cars and you can see ahead of the traffic so the seat's very tall one disadvantage that i notice is when you're hitting 80 km per hour itself the wind blast is strong so i'm guessing on highways uh, it is it will be difficult to cruise at 110 120 kilometers per hour because you'll have a strong wind blast because of the nature of the ergonomics i heard that some companies are coming up with an aftermarket visor uh, the big ones so that it'll give you a little bit of wind blast protection so i'm hoping that when we when you want to tour long distances we can just fix it on go for the ride and then come back and then remove it because the look doesn't go along with the crambler style this engine this character of the engine if they had adopted in a tiger 400 i would be like that meme take my money <laughs> here it is and then i would have gone for the tiger 400 i hope triumph comes up with that but i think the next uh, bike they're going to going to come up with is the thurston 400 based on the other Turkestan bikes with the same platform. If it comes with the Tiger 400, it will make absolute sense for the Indian market. And now bike is finally here. It has come uh, to us uh, and I'm riding it through the cities and all that stuff. So for the thousand kilo, first thousand kilometers, we cannot exceed 6,000 RPM. They have locked it in the ECU itself. Hopefully you can expect uh, more videos on the review and the surveys and everything uh, related to the Triumph Scrambler 400 x and I'm happy that now Nino has a companion and a friend and we got that uh, uh, red and black color. It's kind of similar to my Himalayan as well, the color scheme and the paint scheme and all that. So that was my uh, honest impression and honest takeaway uh, after riding uh, these three bikes, the KTM 390 Adventure X, the Triumph Scrambler 400 X and the new Himalayan 450. I would love to know what you guys thought about these three bikes. If you have test driven or if you own any of these three bikes, please feel free to uh, drop a comment below so that anybody else reading it uh, can make an informed decision. And uh, I would love to know your thoughts on it. If uh, you agree or disagree or not. If you have, if you want to say anything about uh, any of the opinions that I shared in this video, you can uh, feel free to comment uh, down in the description below. Now this one, this this video was completely unscripted usually i script my videos telling the pros and cons and all the stuff and comparing the specs and all that stuff i didn't want to get any of the detail i just wanted to keep it as raw as possible uh, to share the uh, uh, emotions and the feeling that i got uh, driving uh, all these three bikes now uh, why i wanted to do this because you never uh, drive the spec sheet right you ride the motorcycle so some motorcycles deliver on the spec sheet some don't some exceed them so that's what happened in uh, in these three bikes that i test drove it. If the uh, feeling was as expected as I went to test drive it, then I would have written a scripted video giving you the pros and cons and all that stuff. If you are in the market uh, looking for a mid-weight segment bike that can do all things like uh, do a touring, uh, a little bit of off-road and city commute, if you want just one bike in your garage or, or if you're looking for a secondary bike, you have a scooter and you have a secondary bike to do all these things, I would strongly suggest you to go ahead and uh, test drive all the three bikes. Maybe one you will like it over the other, but for me, I think Tram Triumph Scrambler 400X made the perfect sense in terms of the quality, fit and finish, the usability, uh, the price and everything. I'm eagerly waiting for the new 2025 updated KTM 390 Adventure that shares the new Duke 390 platform. I'm uh, greatly looking forward to that. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm not upgrading my bike. I'll still keep be keeping in the whole Himalayan phone and put a little bit, a little money to it and upgrade it uh, to my liking. So I have installed new tech cam as well and uh, it is still in the service and uh, it will come to me next week or something and then I will put the review on that also. So stay tuned for all of that. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys found some value in it. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.